Boing, it's Multiplier here. Multiplier here with a whiteboard. Exciting times. Here to tell you all about limiters. First of all, for those a bit newer to music production, what a limiter is and how it works. And then for those maybe a bit more familiar with limiters and how they work, release time. So what happens if you make the release time quicker or slower? Visually, I can explain all this. So this is our waveform, our bit of audio that we want to limit. Basically what a limiter does is apply a limit. So we'll call this the limit. And there are two ways of approaching the limiter. Approach one is to keep the limit fixed and increase the level of the waveform. So this could remain constant and then the waveform gets bigger and bigger and bigger until the waveform hits the limit. Whereas approach two would be to bring down the level of the limit. This limit being called the threshold. If you see it in a, a limiter, like I'm showing you now. Threshold, the threshold at which the limiting begins. Now in this second approach, as you bring down the limit or the threshold until the waveform eventually touches it, what then happens is everything gets turned up again, exactly the same amount. So in this second approach, that's why it can get a bit confusing. If you say pull down the threshold 4 dB, after the limiting happens, everything gets turned up 4 dB. Two different approaches, but, achieves the same sort of result, well, literally exactly the same result. Now, what happens when this waveform hits this limit, the threshold? So imagine, now imagine this is the limit. Remember, this could have happened in one of two ways. I could have either increased the level of the waveform using gain until it hit that limit, or pulled the limit down using threshold. Doesn't matter which way. As you can probably guess, the key areas here are here and here. What the limiter does is turn the waveform down, which is quite hard to draw. Oh, red makes it seem dangerous. What the limiter does is turn down the waveform so that it just hits that limit. Useless at rubbing things out. And then it looks like that. Make sense? Of course, the limiter can do it much more smoothly than I can, but theoretically, that is all a limiter does. It turns a waveform down when it hits the limit. But it gets a lot more complicated than that. As I will show you now, release time. Limiter, release time. Imagine that is a peak of a waveform. So the waveform sort of goes wave, 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 waveform, waveform. And so we will limit this threshold waveform. Now, I've been saying turn down very willy-nilly. I've been saying the limiter turns the waveform down, and, and that's what I've been saying. But think about this. There are different speeds you can turn something down. Remember, turning down decreases amplitude. Now, if I was to turn this down infinitely quick, this is what would happen. Bumped into the waveform, turning down starts here. So if I was to turn it down infinitely quick, you get that, with the waveform being the flat bit. That would be the waveform. Now it's still being limited, it's been turned down when it hit that threshold, but you may have noticed it looks a little bit different. The waveform before looked like that, whereas the infinitely fast limiter, turning it down infinitely fast, changed the way it looked, which is basically distortion. Distortion. But yes, if you limit something infinitely fast, so an infinitely fast release time, you end up with this, distortion. In an ideal world, we want to limit in a transparent way, at least theoretically most of the time, pretty much always. Otherwise, we'd really be looking at distortion. So yes, in the world of limiting, ideally, want to do it transparently. And therefore, when we turn the volume down of this peak, we want to do so in a way that doesn't ruin the peak. It's easy for me to say, well, well that's easy. We just take the waveform and make it smaller like that. Do that limiter. Well, yes, in the simplest possible situations, it's quite easy. You just look at the waveform and make it smaller. But in the real world, waveforms look a lot more complicated than that. The sort of chaos. Chaos, less chaos, more chaos. That's what real waveforms look like. 
And the difficult thing is a release time, so a, a limiter speed, a limiter behavior that may work well here, might not work well here or here or here, because it's different. Maybe there's a snare here and a sort of smooth pad over here and a bass over there. So the limiter's got to do lots and lots of different things without ruining any of it. To get this green waveform, the limiter has to work out, right, the waveform's gonna bump into the, or go into the threshold from here through to here. And therefore I've got to start turning the waveform down before, but and then I've also got to turn it down in a smooth and consistent way so it doesn't change the sound in any meaningful way. So it's got to kind of do something quite complicated. It's really easy to say, limiter, limiter, just turn the waveform down when you get bumped into. But multiplier, it's really complicated and settings I've got to work out in advance and turn, turn it to, what's, what's difficult. I believe in you. Therefore, pretty much all limiters, at least by default, will be intelligently adapting. In the case of isotope ozone, that's basically where the magic is. IRC, IRC for intelligent release control. It's constantly analyzing the waveform and working out what it needs to do to turn the thing down without changing the sound. Now you may be wondering, okay, I know what happens now when the release time is too fast. You get distortion and that's bad. What happens when the release time is too slow? I'm going to draw the outline and not the wave inside. So the outline will say, let's say the wave is a bit of that, then the outline, that. Does that make sense? Kick, bass, Kick and so on. Kick, bass, kick. Kick, bass, kick. The limiter has a threshold. Let's say we pull it down to just above. So kick, bass, kick. Let's say I want the, just above the bass. So I'll do that sentence again in a sec. We'll say this is the threshold. The limiter is too slow. Imagine what it's doing. So you've got to, you've got to be one with the limiter here. I think that's the best way of sort of wrapping your head around it. So you have the limiter, waveform comes in, and you've got to turn it down. So if, you, if you're really slow, so your release time is really slow, you sort of, waveform comes in and you go, oh, okay, turn it down. And then you're turning it down. You start turning it down, you're turning it down. Oh, but but, but the, the next thing's already happened. Ah! It's almost like if you imagine this is the track, if you're too slow, you're sort of turning down everything in this sort of region as one giant thing, instead of looking at it component by component. What you hear is a sort of flappy sound, sort of flapping. Try it yourself. Grab a limiter, could be the one in ozone, and change that release slider to the slowest possible, and then pull down the threshold loads so it's doing loads of limiting. Notice how it sort of flaps about. It sort of does a bit of limiting, and then it holds it down a bit too long, and then it bounces back, so the, the sort of, maybe it, so the limiter could be limiting, sort of pulls down the volume for the first bit of the bass, and then releases because the bass isn't triggering the limiter. So the sort of the first bit of the bass has been turned down when the second bit isn't. And therefore the bass all of a sudden, instead of being sort of, in fact, I may be able to explain with this. If the limiter is really slow, the limiter is going to start doing some limiting around here. It's going to be sort of turning things down, turning things down, but it's going to be turning it down for so long because it's really slow, slow release time, that it's going to be turning it down even when the bass is, oh, I can write this down. Kick, bass, just in case you've forgotten, really important. So yes, if the limiter is really slow, then we'll start turning things down for the kick, because the kick triggers the limiter, but then it's gonna be still limiting, it's gonna be still turning things down for the first bit of the bass. But then, because the bass isn't triggering the limiter, it's not going to be doing any limiting for the second bit of the bass. So then this bass all of a sudden, instead of looking like that, it's gonna be sort of turned down and then pop back up. And it sounds like flapping to me. With the release time too slow, it holds it down too long, and then it eventually pings back. But then that means, say in the case of the bass, the first bit of the bass is being limited, it's being turned down, but the second bit isn't. And therefore this nice bass shape we've designed might look a bit like chaos maybe, uh, potentially, depending on the limiter. But basically it's changing the bass in a way we don't want it to be changed. It's not transparent.
dynamic being the shape of the volume, the shape of the amplitude. Distortion. This is limiter release time, and these are the resulting problems for the various limiter release times. Slow release time, a flappy dynamic, but a too fast of a release time, and you get distortion. You want to be in the middle, so you're not getting a flappy dynamic, that's not good. You don't want distortion, you want to be in the middle. And so what you do is you just keep doing more and more limiting until one of these two happens, and then let's say distortion happens, then you go slower release time, and you just keep sort of adjusting. So pull the limiter down, pull the threshold down, or turn the gain up, basically do more and more distortion, and then once, once when one of these happens, you adjust and then keep doing it again, and adjust, keep doing it more and more and more again, adjust until you can't go any further. As you do more and more limiting, there'll be a point doing so much limiting that you're getting distortions and you're also getting flappy dynamics, usually at different points in the track if you're, say, doing mastering. So that'd be a sign you've done as much as possible. Does that kind of make sense? This is the important bit. I still recommend understanding the first bit because it explains why distortion happens at fast release times, and why you get a flappy dynamic at slow release times, and that helps you remember it, otherwise you've got to rely on your memory. But even if you don't understand it, this is the really important bit. As you do more and more limiting, one of these two things will happen, and then when they do happen, you can use your knowledge of release times to adjust, and then sort of keep doing that as much as you need to. I am also aware I haven't given you any audio examples here, and that's for a very important reason. I want you to do it yourself. Ideally, choose a limiter with great visual feedback, such as isotope ozone, and therefore, if you're using isotope ozone, uh, my personal favorite, you can see when the limiting's happening, overlaid with the audio, so you can see, as you'll say, doing more limiting, where it's turning it down, how it's turning it down, how long it holds it down, and all that sort of lovely stuff, and helps you understand exactly what it's doing. And yeah, for those who do have isotope ozone, actually, even if you don't have ozone, what I'm about to say will have an equivalent in whatever limiting plugin you're personally using. So remember I was talking about limiter being intelligent and having to work out, right, how do I turn something down? Different limiters will use different limiting algorithms. And you find that even within the same limiter, you'll probably get a few different options. These lim words, limiting algorithms. And in the case of isotope ozone, for using ozone 6 and below, the one you want to use is called IRC3. I think maybe it's called, it's kind of three like that. IRC3, Intelligent Release Control 3. It's the algorithm that's the best. It uses a lot more CPU than IRC3. No, words, it uses more CPU. I'm standing up. It uses more CPU than IRC2 and IRC1, but it's much better, and that's why it uses more CPU. So if you have ozone 6 and below, use RC3 only. If you have ozone 7 or newer, they might have brought out newer ones by the time you're watching this, if you're using 7 or newer, there will be another one called IRC4, which I think they've written like that. IRC4. Very confusing name. It is confusing because you would think IRC3 being just better than IRC2 and IRC1, but of course IRC4 is better than IRC3, and therefore just use IRC4. But that, that's, that's not even close to true. Confusingly, IRC4 is not better than IRC3, it's just different. Technically speaking, IRC4 is a multi-band limiter, so it limits different bands of frequencies. I want to say 11 different bands, maybe? psychoacoustically modelled. So IRC4 splits up the signal into various bands, useful bands of frequencies, and then intelligently limits accordingly. So maybe the vocals don't need limiting, but the bass does, so we can sort of turn down the bass frequencies different to the vocal frequencies and so on. So yes, IRC4 is a multi-band limiter, whereas IRC3 is a single band limiter, both of which are the best quality possible. Both use a lot of CPU, but they sound a lot better and they can be pushed a lot harder than say the built-in Ableton limiter or the IRC one or two algorithms, rhythms. Rhythm. And then you're probably wondering for those with Ozone 7, great, but which one do I use? Three or four? No idea, you just have to try them both. There's no, I mean, it's pretty, Pretty 50-50, I find. I must have mastered 
150, 200 tracks using Ozone 7, and even more things if you include non-mastering. So yes, I've used an awful lot of RC3 and an awful lot of RC4, and I find it's a pretty even split between them in terms of which is better. It all depends on the track you're working with, and I haven't found any way of predicting which is more likely to work. So simply try IRC3, which is one algorithm, try IR, IR, try, try IRC3, Try IRC3, try IRC4, see which you can push further, see which you like the sound of if you're pushing it right to the very limits, and then just, yeah, sort of choose one. Importantly though, IRC3 and IRC4 are better than IRC1 and IRC2, but IRC4 is not better than IRC3, it's just different. That's why it's a confusing name, in my opinion, but they are the magic algorithms. I've tried all the limiters, Pretty much all of them, and I find these can be pushed as hard as you ever realistically need to push them nowadays. And they have it, limiters, limiters. <laughs> limiters, what they are, how they work, release times, ozone, IRC, knowledge. <laughs> My name has been Multiplier, and I'll catch you guys on the my, 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 my name has been Multiplier from over in the side. I will catch you guys on the... Catch you guys on the... Flippity flip.